This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Shannon, welcome to Local Color. Thanks for coming this week. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I know you are, and I'm happy that you're here, too. Hey, I uh, understand that you got to interview the guys from Company D. I did. I was so glad they came in. They have a wonderful new show that's opening called Let It Be a Dance, and they have a lot of guest artists that they had to talk well, about. Well, I've heard a lot about the company, and I can't wait to hear your interview. I got to interview uh, Salil Parikh from the 10th India Fest. I can't believe it's been 10 years. I know. I go every year. Now, I've seen you and the kids there yes, before. Yes, we go to. It's the food and then the shopping. Uh, the shopping's pretty great. Yeah, and the music and everything. Yes. But, you know, that's a pretty cool interview, and I can't wait to get to that. And then also, I got to interview Melissa Peterson. Remember Melissa? Yeah, of course. From Edible Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, she came and talked to me about Downtown Dining Week. So downtown dining. Okay. That's the 2012, it's whatever the year is. Yes, whatever the year is, that's the price for that's a three-course dinner from all these restaurants that's that participate. Great. Yeah, so for $20.12, some of them are two for $20.12. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so great. that's pretty cool. And then also she went to um, Whole Foods. Now, I go to Whole Foods for specific items, but it's kind of intimidating to me. Yeah. You know, so I'm hoping she's going to demystify it for us a bit. All those grains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you have going on? There is a lot of theater opening. So uh, there's a lot to see. Okay, talking about theater, let's just go ahead and go to the bumper because we've got some theater happenings that are really cool. Check them out. Tony, I'm so glad you're back in town. And I know Darlene is really glad you're back in town. It's always good to be back in Memphis. Good. Yeah. Hi, I'm here today with Darlene Winters, who's artistic director for Company D and director of her current show, Tony Horn. The show is called Let It Be a Dance. When can I go see it? November 1st at 7 o'clock at the Buckman Performing Arts Center. Tell me a little bit about the company. The company is a nationally recognized dance group of individuals with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. We have about uh, 24 dancers in the company and we are literally leaping into our 13th year. That's so exciting. Yeah. So what are the, what's the age range of the dancers? 15 to 32. How often does the company meet? We meet twice a week. Um, the older ones have uh, four hours of rehearsal a week and um, the younger ones about approximately three. Of course, now I'm preparing for the show. It's a, it's a marathon. It's every day. <laughs> it's every, it's day. every day. Every day. And you're, with, you're with Darlene every day in dance classes as well as rehearsals, right? We have morphed them all together. So we have <laughs> uh, dance class rehearsal, warm up all as one. And I am always there. We're working on this show diligently. This is a revival, actually. Company D did the show last year with great success. Around the same time, yeah, right? Yeah, it was in the mm -hmm. fall, and mm -hmm. I missed seeing it, but this year I'm a guest director, Good. and we are telling a story through dance, through text, and through visual aids such as the lights and the scenery, and it is based on a wonderful book called The Dancing Man uh -huh. by Ruth Bornstein. So this is a great book and a show for families. Darlene has been talking about this book for years, mm -hmm. and you finally have brought it to the stage. I know you're excited to see it come to fruition. What was the process of bringing it to, to the stage? Actually, it's been almost three years. Each summer we have uh, a three-week workshop, very intensive. That we host. At yeah. um, Hutchison School. Right. And the, like the first summer we embraced it just through um, video and photography and a lot of exploration of vocabulary and language to bring the dancers into just because the book has dark and dreary as far as um, the feeling tone of, mm -hmm. uh, and then the spirit of the dancing man. So, um, yes. Great. Now yeah. you're working with multiple directors on this project. This is a hard project because you have a director with the overall vision, you have the dancers who have been together for many years dancing together, but then you have multiple directors. 
Who, who are your guest the artists? The exciting part is, because um, I have three, three wonderful. Kevin Thomas, Collage Dance Collective. Oh, right. He is a phenomenal um, a director and choreographer, and he's relatively new in town. I think he's mm -hmm. just finished his fourth uh, season mm -hmm. here, third season. And he's also very much involved in the, in the community, going in uh, to the schools and teaching dance, and he has a new studio. So he has brought the element of ballet, oh, nice. and there is a beautiful piece the dancers are doing to Adagio nice. with some lifts, and we're very excited that about that. That is exciting. Yes. Who, who else is working on and, the project? Um, Wayne Smith, Project Motion. Mm -hmm. He's also an educator. Um, he teaches dance at the University of Memphis and um, at Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. And his element is um, modern, but also he's brought more of an international flair with his piece oh, nice. that um, is what we've referred to as the jig. <laughs> <laughs> and then your final artist that, that's working on the project with you? Tarek Moore. Uh, he's the artistic director for You Dig Dance Academy. Tarek has been nationally recognized for the dancers that he's trained. And so he's bringing another element of what is known in Memphis as joking, mm -hmm. combined with a little hip hop. And it's just so with each different genre of dance, it's taken the dancers to a whole different level than they have been exposed to before. So on November 1st at 7 o'clock at the Buckman Performing Arts Center, you can see Company D doing a theatrical piece that, that in, includes three different genres of dance called Let It Be a Dance based on The Dancing Man. Did I capture it all? That's you, it in a nutshell. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so thanks so much but, for coming and in. I just have to say it's been a wonderful having Tony yes. by my side and directing and because it takes a lot to pull all this together. A lot. And he has the and theatrical vision for it. Yes, Great. It well, thank you so much for coming in thank and you. telling me about it. I appreciate it. I know that everyone has their way of going to India Fest, but mine is I get there at 10 o'clock, I park my car, go in, find something for breakfast, then immediately go and get henna. Last year I got the henna that goes up around your hand, around your thumb. I think she said it was some kind of wedding mm -hmm. uh, henna design. And then uh, I go and shop, put my shopping uh, finds in the car, then come back and have lunch. <laughs> Now, this is the 10th annual India Fest, right. and it is going to be November the 3rd mm -hmm. from 10 until 7 right. at the Agri Center. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with Salil. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So tell me, what, um, what can we expect this year? Uh, India Fest, this is the 10th year we've, that we've had uh, India Fest now. Um, there's going to be a lot of food, a lot of fashion things. There's going to be cultural entertainment stuff going on. There's going to be a kids' corner. Uh, for kids, where kids can have and have interactive games, so they they can learn more about India there. There's going to be uh, henna for the for the kids. That's those temporary tattoos. And for me. On. And and for <laughs> you. Uh, I think it'll be good for the kids because they can learn more about India. There'll be uh, uh, sessions on how to write their name in in, in Indian languages. Oh, so that's that should cool. Be, that should be pretty fun. There's going to be a, a cooking demonstration going on all throughout the day. So okay, those. now let's back up and slow down because okay. India is a country with how many people? It's over a billion people. And it's a third of the size of the United States? A third of the size of the U.S. And there are 18 states? Over many, 18, many states, 20 states. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and what's so cool about India is your states are just not borders. They're, they're different cultures, different languages, different beliefs, different traditions within each state. That's that, that's exactly right. I almost think of India as being like like Europe. If Europe was one was one country because the, there are different languages in every state and there are different cultures and customs and and actually the variety is almost as big as it is between Polish and Spanish. You're talking about Poland and Spain. So there's a lot within of within one country. Within one country. So there, there's so a cool. lot of rich heritage. And you know it's cool to be um, from India right now. <laughs> You've always thought it was cool to be from India, but you know what I mean? It's like Indian culture is on the forefront mm -hmm. of people's curiosity. And I love the event because I love learning about the different mm -hmm. cultural different diversity within the country. Right, right, um, right. Now, the food is very important to me. Yes. yes. Um, how many different food vendors will you have there? I think there's going to be over 15. Oh, wow. Different, different, different vendors. And uh, there'll be vendors that will be providing certain state, certain certain regional foods. 
And uh, we have vendors, uh, local vendors, uh, different restaurants, but we've also got people from, from home, from different different states oh, who are going to so be producing cool. food. And so now, it should be really good. Tell me about Raga Boys. Now, this is a separate ticketed event within the event, right. but tell me about Raga Boys. My daughter's excited about that. Yeah, them. Raga Boys, it's a group of brothers, uh, young, 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 handsome kids <laughs> who are, uh, they're, they're from South Asia, and they're coming here for, for this event. And uh, they are, they... They're, they emphasize a lot, a lot of fusion, a lot of fusion. Extremely music. talented. Yeah, very good. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, now you've told me that you're going to have uh, entertainment throughout the day, mm -hmm. but you told me that w you were going to have a competition. There's also going to be a competition. We have that every year between different states, and it's local artists in uh, Memphis. They get they get together and they practice for you know, many many months, and uh, there'll be a, a, a non-competitive session, um, but there'll also be a competitive session. The competitive sessions are really a lot of fun because these people are very talented. Oh, I'm so excited yeah. about that. Now that's different this year, isn't it? But we've had that. Uh, we, we've had that for 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 a few years. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, now tell me about the. In the artist bazaar, mm -hmm. you've got clothes, jewelry, arts, crafts, um, music, home, CDs. yeah, music, CDs, mm -hmm. home decor. That's exactly right. We've got we've got all bases covered. We got uh, some some of the newest hip uh, fashion. If people are, are into that, if they want to buy some new evening wear. We'll we'll have that there. But there'll be lots of different kind of jewelry and the accessories that that go with that. Uh, a, a lot of the new latest music, so it should be a, a lot, a lot of different things for everyone. And now the Hindi calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Is there someone there that not only shows you how to write but tells you what it means? Oh yes, they'll, awesome. they'll, yeah, there'll be somebody there to, to show them. Are you going to have the yoga corner this year? Yoga corner. I think we have the yoga corner this year too. We're we're, we're trying we're trying to get that, so that that should be good. <laughs> well, you know, I like it because India Fest is an opportunity for for you guys to celebrate your. Um, culture, but thank you so much okay. for celebrating it with us. Well, thank you. you Thanks know. for having me. Well, and now listen, it's at the Agri Center, and you, there's parking all over the place, correct? There's parking all over. That shouldn't be a, that shouldn't be a problem. We're going to have several parking attendants there to, to, to lead people in. Thank you so much. I can't okay. wait to see you. Well, thank you. Coming up next, Elizabeth interviews John Doyle from the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. Thank you so much. We've got something new to talk about in the music scene in Memphis, but it's not a brick and mortar building that you can go visit. It's actually entirely virtual and capturing and cataloging the history of Memphis music. And here to talk to us about it is John Doyle, who's the executive director of the Rock and Soul Museum. John, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. It's great to be here. Okay. So tell us about the Memphis Music Hall of Fame. It's a long time coming. Um, but not soon enough. It's probably something that the city should have undertaken 40 years or more ago. But um, finally, um, it's, the time is right for us to do it. And um, Memphis Rock and Soul Museum has been working on it for about six or seven years. Came out of a strategic planning session of the museum of how we could better advance our mission of preserving and telling the story of Memphis music and perpetuating its legacy. And we've got an incredible Smithsonian developed exhibit, but for us to reach outside and to do something stronger, um, we decided to undertake the formation of the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, which is a native Memphian. It's something I've heard talked about for decades. And um, the time is right, and fortunately with our role telling the complete Memphis music story, it um, gave us the opportunity to reach out with the other partners we work with in the community the Music Commission, Music Foundation, the other not-for-profit entities mm -hmm. like Stax, Graceland, um, Sun Studio, Center for Southern Folklore, Bill Street Caravan, and for us to all come together. And believe it or not, despite the fact that people are coming to various ones of us buying tickets and things like that, we work collaboratively because tons of tourists come to our city for a music pilgrimage. And so it's great for us to come together to not just tell our own stories the way that we do, whether we're a Stax Museum or whether we're Sun, but to really pay tribute to the icons that put us on the map. It Absolutely. really gave us all of our jobs and literally not only put Memphis on the global musical map, but totally changed the cultural complexion of the entire world. Completely. So you had this really cool event on uh, Tuesday the 16th, did this yeah. big announcement of all the inductees, but there's another event that's coming up that we should know about. So what's sure. on the radar for later in November? Yeah, we've just announced the inductees. It's time to pay tribute to them. And we had a very incredible nominating committee come together last spring. Great authors, historians, um, nationally recognized filmmakers, a lot of Grammy winners 
who came together. We didn't necessarily want Memphians doing the choosing, although a lot of us who were Memphians were there in the room to answer questions, to pull information. But we didn't want it to get into Memphians choosing Memphians, just because, not that there wouldn't be a fairness, but obviously um, someone who is so incredibly knowledgeable like a Marvell Thomas, who's strong in the music community, but obviously someone like a Rufus Thomas, who is on the inaugural class, will go in, and so we never wanted it to be finger pointing. Native Memphians, we have a tendency to do that. <laughs> so we identified through this nominating committee last spring 25 inaugural inductees. It's a pretty large group, um, but even with as large a group as it is for the first year, we're already hearing, but what about, but oh, what absolutely. about, absolutely. I heard, what about Chip's moment the other what day? About, that was I've the first heard. one I got. Yeah, and this is the fun part of it. Since it was announced on that Tuesday, it's been the great conversations. Oh, what about Chip's moment? What about Johnny Cash? What about Furry Carl Lewis. Perkins? Furry I got Lewis. That one. What about the Gentries? Um, and it does go on and on. And that's the great thing. This that, is just the beginning. Yeah, and that we're in a city to where we're doing that as opposed to exactly. how are we going to fill it up. Um, you know, I, I've said many times in this process if we were Oklahoma City or if we were Boise, we would induct five people and we would be through. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it's time, the event that you're talking about, which is Thursday, November the 29th okay. at the Cannon Center for the Performing Arts. And as much as all this dialogue is going on in this conversation and what about and should it be and everything like that, it's the time for Memphians to buy a $30 ticket. It's what tickets start at the Cannon Center for the Performing Arts that Thursday night. And to really come out and pay tribute to these folks. It's time for us to not just talk about them, not just let them reside in history, but to really celebrate. And so although I'm glad there's still talk about what about this person, what about this person, I hope that Memphis, Memphians, and I can say this as a native Memphian, that we don't critique, but that we celebrate and we congratulate these folks that are Absolutely. going in. I had someone say, well, how did the nominating committee choose this person over this person? It, it's not a contest, folks. It is years and years of us honoring luminaries of the music industry that we should have been doing for decades. And Absolutely. so let's start doing it and let's and do it for on. decades because we right. will be doing it for decades. So quickly, let's tell people where they can find the Hall of Fame. Okay. Online. Online, we have a phenomenal website that was de designed by a company called Simple Focus. It's um, online at memphismusichalloffame.com. Perfect. Which is pretty easy. They can check it out there, yeah. and they can also visit the Rock and Soul Museum at memphisrockandsoul.org. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. And eventually, there'll be a cool interactive gallery where people will be able to access stuff about these things. On that website, you can read their bios, you can see videos, you can sample their music. It's a cool Amazing. site. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here, John. We really appreciate it. We're excited to check out the Hall of Fame, and y'all check out some music events that are coming up here in Memphis in the next couple weeks that I don't want you to miss. Downtown Dining Week is coming up November the 5th through the 11th downtown Memphis, and I'm so glad I got Melissa back with me. I've missed you so much. I've missed being here. I really have. And Downtown Dining Week started to encourage folks to come downtown. It was a time, you know, when they were uh, traditionally slow. A couple, yeah. you know, a slow week, and the restaurants all got together to kind of market themselves as, hey, come visit downtown. And it's worked out to be a real fun week. And this is 2012, so a three-course meal is $20.12. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. I would suggest you make a reservation. It's, it's become so popular that it is a good idea to make a reservation. So this year, um, we've got who? We've got Majestic, Felicia's, Lunchbox Eats. Have you been there? Love it. Love it. Uh, Blue, Itabina, SOB. City Market. Oh, it's like a test or something. Yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah. I get a good But grade. now look, this is the thing that I like. They're not going to announce the full list until right before. Right. I and you know, some of, some of the chefs do special things that aren't on their regular menu just for this. Some of them do, it's a single course or uh, two, Three. dinner for two yeah. for the $20. No, I thought it was it just person. It just depends on the restaurant. Okay. Sometimes it's dinner for two and because something like Kooky Canuck might do dinner for two. I don't know that they actually are, but it just depends on the restaurant because they've got lunch restaurants, they've got city gro city grocery, city market. Mm -hmm. City market. So city market. Um, so lots of different things that they can try. And, you know, I'm still amazed. We've been here five years, and I'm amazed that there are still people I talk to who go, oh, I haven't been downtown in 20 years. Yeah. This is a great reason to come downtown. And you know what I like? It's all week. 
So you can do a restaurant a night, unless you're real adventurous, you could do two a night. Two a night. <laughs> oh, I've never done that. <laughs> But, and it also makes downtown kind of hip and happening. Yeah. You know, downtown's great whenever there's an event, an Orpheum uh, play or something happening yep. at the Forum. And this in itself kind of makes it an event because all the restaurants it. will be busy and you're bound to run into someone you know. So where are you going? Well, you know, I live downtown. And, I know. And I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of being downtown and walking to restaurants and we, we go to almost all of them but we do have some favorites we go to SOB a lot uh, lunchbox eats is, and the I new love it. my husband is thrilled that there's a new central barbecue I don't know if that's on the the list yet but um, majestic we go there a lot you know I'm a hamburger addict I've not been to 83 oh you should and I've not been to SOB <gasps> South of Beale. I just came from SOP. Okay, what do I need to get there? I'm a big fan. They have all the, they have great entrees and little flatbread pizzas, but I'm a big fan of all their side dishes, so I mix and match their side dishes. Oh, I love sides. So my favorite at the moment is the duck fried rice with an egg on it. Oh, gosh. And their maple bacon Brussels sprouts. Oh, my gosh, that sounds so good. That sounds so good. Can't wait. And it's one of those great things where they all get to know you. They see us in there every week, and so they tell me when the new Ghost River beer's on tap, and it, it's kind of like Cheers, where everybody knows your name. Okay, November the 5th through the 11th, Downtown Dining Week, don't miss it. Let's go to Melissa at Whole Foods and hopefully she can demystify the process of this store for me. Hey, I'm here today at Whole Foods with the produce manager, Matt. Hey Matt, what's different about your produce department versus a regular grocery store? Well, one of the things is that uh, most of our products, we carry a wide variety of organic product and uh, it's certified organic from the farm all the way to your basket. Um, you know, we're the only company in the nation that's certified organic. So that means what? No chemicals? No chemicals, no herbicides, pesticides, and it's just all natural product. Hey Ray, so tell me what's the best thing there is about the bulk department here at Whole Foods? The best thing about the bulk department is if you have items that you buy as staples in like large quantities, you can save a lot of money by buying in bulk and uh, it creates a lot less waste, you know, packaging waste. And what kind of things do you have here? Well, we have uh, rices, grains, uh, you know, a good selection of like beans, flowers. Over the other side, we have like uh, nuts and seeds. You're not like a regular grocery store. How are you different? <laughs> Here at Whole Foods Market, we cater to the individual with special diets. Um, right now, a lot of people are having issues with gluten-free. We have a wide variety of gluten-free items, and they're all marked clearly with a gluten-free tag, so you can come in, see what you want, grab it, and get out. Both prepared food and ingredient type food as well. Absolutely, yes. Um, we always list all our ingredients on all our hot bar, on everything in the grocery aisle, to the baking aisle. We want to be 100% transparent about our ingredients, so if you have a special need, you know on the front end. It's kind of an amazing store. There's a lot going on in here. There's stuff for people who cook, stuff for people who don't cook. Um, how can it be a less intimidating experience to come in and get the Whole Foods experience? Here at Whole Foods Market, every Thursday night, we do a Thursday night tasting tour from 5 to 7 p.m. You can come in, tour the store with your taste buds, try what you like. Ask departments what's in season, what they like, how to prepare an item, and again, you get to taste it. Okay, this is my favorite place in Whole Foods. This is the cheese counter. This is Aaron. We call him the cute cheese guy. Aaron, there's a lot of cheeses here. How do you help me navigate it? Well, we have a lot of great cheeses. Uh, we ha also have a great staff that has a lot of, of extensive knowledge that knows specific about what regions and the specific kinds of cheeses that we have. We also have a lot of exclusive cheeses that are, are not available to the rest of the community that we get from France directly. Uh, one of the favorite lines I have is Hervé Mons cheeses. They, uh, they have a lot of great, great specific cheeses for the holidays 
and any customer can come in and try any of these cheeses that you see. We have over 150 in the case currently right now, and you guys can come in and, and, and try them out at any point. Tracy, we've covered a lot of ground today. There's a lot going on in Memphis. I know. I'm really excited about Twilight of the Gods. I know. I want to see La Boheme at GPAC. Well, now, I'm going to go back. Do you know anything about Twilight of the Gods? You know what? I heard that your son is in it, <laughs> playing Rasputin. Kenan is Rasputin. Well, you know, who doesn't want that on their resume? Absolutely. <laughs> Me. Now, La Boheme, that's at, where are they it's playing? It's at GPAC. GPAC. It's Opera Memphis, right? Yes. Yeah, that's exciting. That's going to be a wonderful And production. then um, uh, Playback Memphis, mm -hmm. they're always doing such interesting pieces. Absolutely. Absolutely. They take real life stories and turn them into theater. It's going to be wonderful. So, what time do you want to go to um, India Fest? I don't know. I'm going to be there at 10. I want to get there early because then you get the best food choices and you don't have to wait in line so long for henna. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I've already admitted it. I eat twice at India, India Fest. That's hilarious. <laughs> I have breakfast and it's I have lunch. It's my son's favorite food. Is it really? Yeah. Hannah's too. Mine too. <laughs> and then, um, you know, Veterans Day. I love the parades, but I really wish that they were on the weekends. I mean, I know Veterans Day is a specific right. day, but I wish that they were on the weekends so the school kids could get out because when I was a kid, it was really a big part of our of our culture. Right. What we do at Hutchison's, we have a separate assembly. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And um, the masks of the, how do you say it, Mihokan? Uh, that sounds good to me. Okay. Be but uh, yeah, so it's Day of the Dead mass celebrating <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Halloween, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Please go out and enjoy your local color. So.